Hello, BookTube, and welcome to Day 7 of Litmus, the literary event of the Christmas season, created by Adrian at Strip Cover Lit, where he uh, uh, wants us all to celebrate, uh, what we do here on BookTube anyway, celebrate all kinds of literature in our lives, and gives a prompt for each day. Uh, and the prompt for today is a little problematic on its surface, which is uh, to read and then talk about uh one of your own poems, <laughs> I assure you. <laughs> Even if I did that, it would be of no interest to anyone. But in his original video and in a comment that, that he left, he, uh, our, our master of ceremony says that you, it doesn't have to be a poem. You can talk about something else. In fact, the example that he brings up is journaling. What if you, if you keep a journal? You could talk about that. And that's exactly what I want to do. Because <laughs> I've been keeping a journal for a very long time. <laughs> it's a very, very long time. A daily journal. I absolutely love it. And uh, I wanted to show you some of the, the changing fashions that I have used for the longest time. For years and years and years keeping a journal, I used uh, blank page sketchbooks because writing on lines just bothered me. And plus, I would often sketch. I would add a sketch to the day. And later on, I also wanted to, I would use clear plastic tape to add in stuff. Uh, I have an example here. This is what they all look like. I have probably 30 of these. But this is, this one is, uh, this one is uh, 1990 to 1991. September, late 1990 to uh, early 1991. And it is full of, uh, you know, there's just a neatly handwritten text, but also uh, just uh, uh, added in pictures. I would I would add in pictures of whatever was on my mind, what I was uh, what I was doing or thinking about or watching on TV. I had a TV then, uh, and I knew that the future me, which is the person that you write your journal for, uh, I knew that the future me would want to see those things. It would want the visual prompts in addition to uh, just the writing. Uh, even though I, like most people who keep a daily journal, I suspect, almost never go back and revisit it. It becomes an end in itself rather than uh, an archive that you consult. Although I do, I do sometimes, sometimes consult it. But uh, I, so I, uh, I did this for years and years and years. These, these, uh, the same kind of thing. I love the uniformity of it. Uh, but then I realized after a while that I was adding so much that it was causing the volumes to bulge, uh, and it did, just didn't seem practical. And also, I, I these things are, I mean, they're they're kind of unforgiving in terms of you have to hold them open, you have to fight with them. Uh, so uh, f uh, after a long time with those, I moved to spiral bound journals, and I have an example here. I went and found it, and I'm now that I, now that I have it in front of me, I'm wondering uh, if it has. The manufacturer's name in here, because uh, I think these are, these were handmade. Yes, they were. Michael Roger Press Incorporated in Middlesex, New Jersey. I'll have to see if they're still around. Uh, I'll have to see if they're still around. But look at the size of this thing. Big, in heavy, industrial metal spiral, and a vast thing which I made even vaster by taping in and tipping in a huge amount more stuff. So this becomes. Uh, really uh, a combination of journal and scrapbook is really what this is uh, where I would I would include just all kinds of things let me find you an example of uh, yeah there we go this is from August 20th the, a, a picture from the newspaper of a black bear looking over someone's back porch and a report of six people bitten in Florida by sharks uh, and this this particular volume is from uh is from 2000, uh, here we go, uh, this is a photograph of a hawk trying to snatch a toddler <laughs> and failing. Uh, it was also from, I think, the Boston Globe. Uh, but this, this volume was from uh, 2001. And in, on the 4th of September, 2001, there were two more recordings uh, newspaper reports of shark attacks, which I love. I have a more fascination with shark attacks. And on the 4th of September, 2001, I wrote, the best summer ever. <laughs> and only a couple of days later, I was putting in all sorts of news news items about uh, 
September 11th. It, and the mood had completely, the mood of the volume completely changed. In fact, on September 10th, 2001, before the world changed, I included a New Yorker cartoon of the French army knife where every single one of them is a corkscrew. <laughs> <laughs> but then the tone changed, and it, the world changed, and uh, and see these things, they're it's they're so big that they're like an old medieval book. It takes work to open them and work to close them, and they they have a distinct heft to them. Uh, and I did those for a few years. I am now going to check. Now that I have this out, I'm going to check and see if this guy still makes these things, and maybe experiment with getting another one. Uh, but. After a few years of those, I thought, you know, this is a big deal. You can't carry it anywhere. You, you, the extra space makes you tempts you to put in more things than you really should. So for a couple of years, I shifted to uh, the kind of pretty leather journal that you sell at uh, retail bookstores like Barnes & Noble that I love. I have a big weakness for them. There's a bunch of them up on a shelf up there that I haven't even used. Uh, and I would use things like this, where it, you know, you wrap this around to close it, and then you... You unwrap that to open it, and uh, I I tipped in a lot less stuff, uh, and decided that instead of of uh, tipping in pictures, I would just draw, I would sketch on the page what I what I was talking about or what was of interest to me or where I was. I use these for travel journals as well. So if I if we were in a rest stop in New Jersey or something, I would I would sketch a tree and a picnic table and whatever. Uh, but the problem with these was that I would go through one a month <laughs> or one every two months. They weren't big enough. Uh, and that brings us to the approach that I've taken the last couple of years. I really like, uh, and I think, I think I may continue with it. I've toyed with the idea of using one of those decorative volumes, but, uh, I know their limitations already. Whereas this doesn't really have any limitations. And I really like that. I found just a, a leather folder the type that you can find anywhere. They're at my local Goodwills here in Boston. They're piled ten high. Uh, find one of these uh, that has you know the slot for putting in a pad of paper. Only take the pad of paper out, and instead I put in loose leaf pages. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So ordinarily there'd be a there'd be a pad of paper that would that would sit right there, and the cardboard that it's attached to would go down this slot. And that would be what you would write on. There'd be no storage space. Instead, what I did was take that paper out, take the pad out, and put loose paper in that same in this same pocket here, uh, cycling forward. So the the one on top is the one I would use for the my current day's journal entry, and then the ones underneath would be <coughs> excuse me uh, the ones underneath. It would just be. You know, I would I would take today's journal entry and move it <coughs> to the back. Uh, so no no bound volume of any kind. Uh, just you take this, you finish with the day's entry, and you stuff it back in there. So there's nothing that can fall out, and you have this separate pocket for uh, notes and whatnot, and the pen goes right there. So you're all set. You, and because this is all loose... I can also uh, just stuff in there book reviews, New Yorker articles, magazine articles, pictures, all of the stuff that I would ordinarily, that I would in those earlier volumes have taped to the page, I can just put in here. And then at the end of the year of doing that, I, uh, I, I get uh, at a stationery store or something like that, one of those, uh, those flat oblong boxes with a, with a little, the ones with the little nameplate in the front where you can put in a card identifying what's in it and use that per year. So I, I would, when I was all, when I'm all done with the year, I'll take the stack of pages that I have and all the stuff that's in it, ticket receipts, photographs, that sort of thing, put it all together, put it in that box, label it 2015, 2016, and then start again here. Uh, so that it's all in, uh, so I just, I would have a stack of those boxes rather than, uh, a shelf of these books. Uh, and I'm, I really like it. I, I like it enough so that I, I don't know that how tempted I am to go back to a book. Uh, but anyway, in any case, that that's where I stand right now. I stand with these where this is, and it, it, it has the added benefit, uh, of meaning that there's only one place where the paperwork accumulates instead of two places. It used to be that I had a file 
for all the other stuff, the clipped articles, the pictures, the whatnot, and then a journal. Now I have one place for everything. It's all a, a memory of one year anyway. So I figured I'll put them all in one place. Uh, and that's that's where I am now. Fairly nondescript. Maybe if I want if I want a breath of from something new for the new year, I might find a new folder. Uh, but I think I like the arrangement better. Uh, and that's that's where I stand for uh, uh, for day seven of Litmus. Not a poem, but it is journaling. Uh, and the, the, I wanted to finish by uh, wholeheartedly singing the praises of keeping a daily journal. If you don't, you should, especially if you're a writer. But even if you're not. Keeping, it, keeping a daily journal, having this uh, totally accountable and totally uh, unmassaged conversation with yourself at the end of every day is invaluable. It's just invaluable. Not just for the, the larger reasons of forcing you to sit, take a deep internal breath, and think about the things that happened to you that you are trying to recount, but also for... Uh, practical and craft reasons, especially if you're a writer, because at the end of the day, you want nothing more than to go on to other stuff, but you have to, you, you're in the habit now of writing a journal entry for that day. So it forces you to develop the muscles that make you wrestle a large, amorphous amount of material into a coherent narrative that says exactly what you want it to say and do it quickly. And that, those are amazing talents. They are, um, I don't know where I'd be. That is doing, doing a variation of that is largely my job nowadays. I don't know where I'd be if I didn't have umpteen million years of, of practice keeping a journal doing exactly that. I, if you haven't tried it but you've thought about it, make 2018 the year because I, you will quickly become habit-forming and you will love it. <laughs> uh, but it not, and, and I wanted to finish up not just by singing the praises of, of keeping a journal, but also because this is me, by making a recommendation, a book recommendation. <laughs> There's a book. It's not in print anymore, I don't think. But uh, it, it's fairly, fairly, it crops up fairly often in any active bookstore. And of course, as with all cases, I can find you a copy if you want one. It's called A Book of One's Own by Thomas Mallon. And it's a study of people keeping journals. All the different reasons to keep a journal, all the different kinds of journal keepers. And he he just searches through the literature wonderfully and it, and with a, with a very playful attitude that's also very thoughtful. The opening and closing chapters of the book where he summarizes and talks about journal keeping just as an activity are amazing. And his analyses of the various people who keep journals that he studies also amazing. <laughs> so if, in addition to keeping a journal, you'd like to read about other people keeping journals, a, a book of one's own is is definitely a book to have. Uh, but I, mainly the thing I want to stress is to do it. If, if you don't do it, then start. Make 2018 the year when you start. Every day, just one, the equivalent of one page, where you uh, tell future you all about that day, Feel free to include pl plenty of quotidian details, the weather, physical infirmities, cold. Uh, but be sure also to keep an, a weather eye on the bigger stuff. What is it that's actually preoccupying you today? What is it that's making you happy? Even if it's a thing making you happy that feels unworthy, so it's the sort of thing that makes you happy but you'd never admit it to anyone else, you can admit it to future you. Future you knows you well. So you can you can spend all day smiling and and being happy about, for instance, a friend's success, and then in your journal you can confess that it really annoys you because you're more talented. <laughs> that sort of thing. That sort of thing that you don't confess to anybody else. Go ahead and do that. Now I know I said on this channel a little earlier that I was toying with the idea of going digital. I snapped out of that. <laughs> it's horrendous idea and you shouldn't do it <laughs> but, uh, because you already chances are you already have a benign virus in your computer that is slave to your keyboard and copying everything you type chances are very good that you already have such a thing it's unlikely the nature of malware is unlikely that you'll ever really suffer for it but it's there and that means you're, it's not private <laughs> nothing that you type on a computer is ever private. So don't think that it is. So write in a book. <laughs> uh, so that, that, that definitely piece of advice. But there you go. That, that's my, uh, my two cents and then some on journal keeping, which I have done. I, I could not do without it. Uh, and we'll move on tomorrow <laughs> to Litmus Day 8. Uh, I can't wait to hear what all of you make of I can't wait to hear all of your poems <laughs> for today. Uh, but I'll, I'll wrap it up here and I'll see you soon. Uh, thank you, BookTube.